It's funny, coaching young guys, my entire pregame speech was built around the Utah Jazz, New Hampshire this afternoon against Fairfield, and it was all built around guarding the three-point shot. The entire speech, I said, do you know why Utah's winning 10 games? Ball movement, player movement, inside, out, three-point shot. I said, Fairfield today uh, against New Hampshire, I think made 17 threes. And my whole message was, I've been around a long time. If you don't guard the three, you die. You must defend the three, regardless of how many you make. And tonight, obviously, we let them shoot uh, 14 for 29. And you got to give them all the credit in the world. They made one big shot after another. And we rotated poorly, yes, but that was their really good ball movement. They're a terrific team. Speedy does a tr tremendous job with his guys. Our weakness is we have no bench. Um, we're, we're just six deep right now without Osborne, and that hurts us from a fatigue standpoint. But they fought back, came back, and just came off their man in the corner, and uh, that hurt us. But all the credit has to go to Hopkins. It's an excellent basketball game. Questions? Coach, down the stretch, you got a couple of big plays from Nelly Jr. Joseph and Barrick, uh, Jean Louis. Uh, what, why couldn't you get over the top on this one? We left the corner. We switched the pick and roll, which was fine. And then we left the corner, and total momentum was broken with that shot. So we came off the strong side three times tonight, and they were daggers for us. It's, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to take a lot of losses this year. With the type of schedule we're playing, you know, when you play St. Bonaventure in Vermont, and you go out to Las Vegas and play Santa Clara, and you go out to Hawaii, and play SMU, and you play New Mexico at New Mexico, you, you're going to take your losses. What you have to do is learn from it, and then we have to develop some sort of a bench. You, you can't be a running team without a bench, and right now we have no bench, and we've got to develop one to start winning. Rick, you've been involved in a lot of loud uh stadiums and, and a lot of big crowds where would you put this very well today crowd out into it where would you put this crowd amongst uh some you know i think it was a really good crowd but look i've been to kansas kentucky <laughs> i mean uh, uh it's very very good crowd very uh, very strong home court advantage but it's unfortunately i'm old and been to a lot of tough places <laughs> rick uh, on monday night's game Midway through the first half, you put on the press and apparently flipped the game. Um, tonight, the press wasn't as effective. Is that something you anticipated? We have we no Osborne tonight. We're a little thin. We couldn't stay with it. It did help us in the second half, but we didn't press that much in this game. We did at the end. But, you know, when you don't have a bench, guys like Quinn Selinski, you know, he, God bless him, he looks like he's dying out there. Uh, you know, he needs a shot of bourbon or something to get him going. I don't know what it is. He's breathing like he's, he's going to die. And, um, you know, he plays hard in practice, but we have no bench right now, so we can't go all out. Now we'll get, when Sadiqo gets healthy in a month and Osborne gets back from his concussion, we'll be a little deeper. But we also have to develop some of our guys as well. And Cruz was in on some very key points tonight um, when his first game ever. Was there was reason for that? Well, I put him in because Walt, Walt was taking some bad shots. He was, he was forcing it too much, and he left his feet and hurt us on rotation. But Cruz is going to be a great freshman. He's as good a freshman as... I've had, but he's coming off an Achilles injury, and uh, he's still not ready to go. But look, the guys fought hard, came back, they made some mental mistakes, but all the credit, 100% has to go to Hofstra making one big shot after another. Just terrific. Uh, I know Speedy's very proud of his guys. They, they just did a marvelous job tonight. Rick, you guys held Aaron Estrada to 10 points. What was the game plan going, in, going up against him tonight? Well, obviously we wanted to go to his right hand. He's unstoppable going left. We wanted to switch out of necessity. Where we made our mistake, if we switched, we were better off. But we kept coming off the strong side to help, and that's what you can't do. So that's where we made our mistake. But he's a really, the other guy stepped up. And you know what? He didn't force things. He's a great player because he, he said, okay, they're playing me well. Let me get my teammate shots. And that's what great players do. So all the credit has to go to him by not forcing things. Coach, on Monday you were talking about how much work you went, how much work went into scouting Penn and how you've been working on their sets for three months. Today, maybe the defense wasn't as geared towards um, Hofstra's strengths about shooting the ball. Um, what do you have to say about Well, Hofstra's a lot different. They're a one-on-one -on -one team. They very rarely make more than three passes. If you chalk them 90% of the time, they won't be more than three. They're a great one-on-one -on -one paint, touch, and dish. And 
we, we were unable to keep them out of the lane. At halftime, I think we forced one turnover and had a record low in my career of 45 years, three deflections. Second half, we got 26, which was much better. So it's, um, they're more difficult to guard than a passing team. Um, you know, you got guys out there that can put it on the put it on the deck and make plays, and that that's tough. And they all can make plays. Rick, now that uh, three game series is complete, what'd you think of the chance to play a local local rivalry for two teams that have a hard time scheduling their conference games? We got, two more, we got two more years. We got two more years. We got two more years. We got two more. I apologize for that. Then I'll just ask, what you think of the local rivalry? And, and I think it's great. I got great respect for Hofstra. Obviously, I went to high school in St. Dominic's. So. Um, got great respect to always had for Hofstra. Got great respect to Speedy as a player and now a coach. He's a terrific coach. Runs great stuff and um, really, really terrific. So, uh, you know, we love playing Hofstra. We love playing. Play, we'll play anybody. Look, anybody who decides to play at midnight in Las Vegas and go to Hawaii, right, and go to New Mexico, um, we, we love playing uh, terrific teams and, and they're a terrific team. Coach, uh, do you anticipate, uh, how much do you guys anticipate Hofstra playing zone for a lot of the game? And, uh, we thought they'd play us all zone. We, we were ready for that. Did you guys uh, offensively then be sitting uh, in a zone for a lot well, of the game? Well, you, you got to look at the stats. Uh, we shot uh, 47%, 36%. We had 17 assists and eight turnovers. So we did a good job. Just we our inability was couldn't stop their three. But uh, we knew they'd play zone. Uh, we were fairly sure of that. Ken. Coach, just ask you about Dennis uh, Jenkins. Uh, uh, he had a good game. Monday night is a more tentative tonight. What is his role uh, versus Quinn uh, 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 at the top of the key? Uh, you, tension, you mentioned last week that uh, Quinn's going to be playing like the Euro type of position point forward. Well, remember, it's a zone tonight. Yeah. So it's a lot different for Davis. His job is to paint touch and get other people's shots. And he didn't do a great job of that, but he didn't do a bad job. You know, it's it's I the only thing I can look at defensively is that we just did not defend the three, and that's why we lost the game. And you know, it's I've been coaching a long time, and I see it all the time in basketball. If you don't guard that damn three point line, you're going to lose. And um, you know, I saw it the other night with um, who was playing the Knicks at home, and I think it was Milwaukee or whoever it was. Saw it with them, didn't guard the three. Uh, some game at home the other night I was watching. Uh, I saw it today with I was watching the Fairfield game, saw it there. I watched Utah. The three point line, I'm, I'm, and I'm a firm believer in it before. You know, my first four or five Big East games, the opposing coach didn't want to take it. John Thompson, Roly Massimino, Lou Conasecker, and one other coach. I think it was a combination of five total threes. They wanted no part of it. And we were just fucking bombs away. <laughs> and, and we you know, had a very average, uh, athletically, Providence team that went to the Final Four because everybody was, they didn't catch on and we, it was too late. So, you know, and I, I know better than anyone, you got to stop this three point line. Coach, you got Silas Sunday in for a few minutes uh, today. What's his potential? What do you need to do to He's develop? not ready to play. He's too slow defensively right now. He's just learning. He's going to be terrific. He's just a freshman. He's not ready to play. Yet. Osborne, obviously, back. But he did a decent job tonight. He's going to be a terrific basketball player. Some freshmen are ready to play. Some aren't. And he's not right now defensively. But he's good. I love having him. I think he's got a, it's a journey with him. Uh, we brought in a lot of freshmen. We just somehow have to have to fill that bench. I think we can get to eight players when Sadiku comes back. I think we can get to nine. That'll help us a lot. Thank you. Last one, yeah. You brought up how much you admire Speedy Clackton's really as a coach so far in his young coaching career. As someone who's been around for a long time in basketball, and college basketball specifically, where do you see this Hofstra team, Hofstra team going under Speedy Clackton this season? The only thing they, the only thing they got to watch out for is bad threes. Bad threes. You know, you can't say, oh, I'm on fire, I'll just take the next one. You got to take good threes where your players are in position to get a second one, where you're paint touching and dishing, and not just coming down and jacking it up. Uh, that's the only thing he's got to be, be concerned about down the road is you can't be too happy with the three. Uh, but they took it 90% of the time tonight the right way. And I think they're going to have a terrific team. Uh, I don't know all the teams in their league. It's the Colonial, right? I, I don't know all the teams. Is that Richmond's league? No, no. that's Atlantic. Thousand. 
Towson, 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 Towson's, Towson. Towson's outstanding. So that that's a team that will have to beat. They're a veteran ball club, um, and I wish him nothing but the best. He's got a big fan in me. Be rooting for for Hofstra, and I hope they hope they have a great season. They got a big fan. Thanks, coach. All right, thank you.